Hey everybody, what's up? Well, today's video, we are going to go over in detail for our new Mythbuster video, the Monocentropus species. Also known as, I like to call them the super genus because they are super rare and super incredibly expensive. So there's only uh, two available in the hobby. The good, which is the Belfouri, and the ugly, which is the Lambertoni. You know, kind of a joke, the good and the ugly. Well, except that there's no bad one. <laughs> okay, so basically this is our um, this topics we're going to go over. The common names, the scientific names, how you pronounce them. Talk about the cost, the availability, uh, the sizes, the lifespan, the mature males, the care sheet, temperament, breeding, and the overall recommendations. Alright, so let's get started. So, as I said, there's only two available uh, species in the hobby in the Monocentropus genus, which is the Scotra Island Baboon, which is the Monocentropus Belfouri, and the Madagascar Lambertons tea, which is the Monocentropus Lambertoni. So, the way we pronounce it, it's a very um, easy scientific name to pronounce, Monocentropus. Balfouri and Lambertoni. So let's go have a look at these species and what they look like. Okay, so I'm on Tarantula Canada's website. I'm going over uh, their photo gallery and into the Monocentropus. Okay, so we have four pics to show you Balfouris and the Lambertoni. So this is a Balfouri spiraling. Oh, it's Socotra. Sorry about that for dispelling. This is the female. Perhaps one of the most beautiful tarantulas available in the hobby. However, it's up there for P. metallica. Kind of like the P. metallica a little bit more. This is the mature male. As you can see, he's pretty blue. What differs is that uh, the males have a much more blue carapace than the females. You can see it's a much more paler version. And the Lambertoni, which is the big brown one. So, there's only two species available in the genus, but how much do they cost? Well, that's where the prices come in, and that's why they're called the Super Genus. It's kind of like owning a Lamborghini, because they're very expensive to buy and to own. So, the Balfouri is probably the most expensive tarantula on the market to date. Spiderlings, uh, as Tarantula Canada sells them, for about a quarter inch, around $200. And adult females, if you can find any, are likely going over a thousand dollars. When I met Tarantula Canada quite a few years ago, um, first time I met them was back five years ago, I asked them, what was your most expensive tarantula that they actually sold? Well, she told me, of course, it was a sub adult female uh, Balfouri at the time. So keep in mind, this was around, uh, she sold it somewhere between 2005-2006 for a grand total of two grand. Wow, wow, wow. You sure have to love teas to be able to bet, spend that kind of cash. That's pretty much a decent used car. Unfortunately for me, the Lambert, the uh, Balfour is a little bit too rich for my blood. That's why I haven't owned one yet or trying to find one with a decent price to get one. So unfortunately, you're going to have to resort to uh, buying online. And wouldn't you believe, my pet store, um, where Angelo works, does have Lambertons uh, out there. And I think they price it for around $270. So dealers that you can think of, um, I'll, again, I'll list them in the video description. Uh, if you're in the U.S., uh, Ken the Bug Guy is one of them. Uh, Kelly Swift's Inverts, Jamie's Tarantulas, 
Uh, if you're in the UK, uh, the Virginia Cheeseman, uh, co.uk, the Spider Shop. And if you're in Canada, Avery's Exotics, uh, Tarantula Canada. As well as visit the Arachnoboards forum. I showed you in my previous MythBuster video on how to join the forums. Very easy to use, very user friendly. Well, in some cases, some of the users can be a little um, condescending to some newbies, but other than that, it's the perfect way to get good tarantulas for the good price. So, now that you understand how much these teas can go for, you're probably asking yourself, well, how big did they get and how long did they live? Did they get really big like T. Blondie or did they get really small like the C. elegans? Well, oh, I did forget to mention that, well, as you know, baboons are African species. So these are terrestrial species, so I'll say in the video of exactly how to take care of it. Uh, you have to understand that these aren't recommended for the beginner because they have potent venom. They're quite aggressive. They cannot flick urticating hairs, so that's why they rely more on their defensiveness. As well as, you know, like, I'm going to get flamed for this. Uh, to me, old world terrestrials, they're not really that interesting because most of the time you won't actually see them because they're pet holes. And owning an OBT and not posing a video of it for several months, no, goes to show you that um, those teas are pretty happy when they're at homes. Right. So, the Lambertoni is probably one of the larger specimens. Uh, they get to be having a five and a half inch to six inch leg span. So, I'll show you my specimen named Nuburu. I got this at a super deal at a pet store for around $105, <laughs> which was a one-time only deal. So you can see there's my female. She likes to hide. And the Monocentropus belfuri gets a little bit smaller, around 4.5 to 5 inches. So it's pretty typical of your Cherneochilus lagardi, or the Fort Hall baboon that I described in detail in Mythbuster video 7. Okay, so now about the growth rate. Well, I can't really tell you from experience because Belfulries and Lambertonis are a little bit too rich for my blood, especially uh, $200 for around a quarter inch, so I can't really tell you exactly how fast they grow, uh, but I would assume that they're pretty typical of most baboons, like your OBT, your P. Ligardi, your um, HMAC, they're pretty fast growing, reaching three to four years in sexual maturity. Uh, lifespans, since it's a baboon, you're not going to have as great of a lifespan than your typical B. smithy or your G. rosea. Females generally will live around 10 to 15 years, and males will probably live around half that. Okay, so now about the care sheet. So this is actually the first video that I ever do a care sheet on this uh, Lambertoni. As you know, uh, this is the first time I own this uh, species. Okay, so their care sheet is pretty simple and they can be kept very similar to most baboons like the horn baboons, uh, the OBT, the Pilar Guardi. Um, generally a critter keeper like this, the standard ones, by Crab Works are great. So all you have to do is uh, keep a water dish at all at, full at all times. Some eco-worth, you probably want to fill half of it because these are burrowing species. And a cave or a cork bark mounted on its side. And this seems to house well my Lambertoni. And the Balfouri will actually have very similar housing. Now one thing I noticed about the wild-caught Lambertonis is that they're especially difficult to feed in captivity and there's many times where I always wanted to make a feeding video featuring uh, this lovely five-inch female but I can never get her to eat. I don't know if she eats off-camera when I'm not looking at her but it's kind of hard to them to settle down in captivity so I would just suggest just to keep feeding them um, as much as you can and try to maybe varying their diet. Uh, 
most of my tarantulas seem to do well on crickets and superworms. So generally I feed all my teas once every two weeks. That's twice a month. That's whenever you see new tarantula feeding videos. Speaking of which, one will be uploaded uh, this Saturday. And you'll see how well they attack and they're pretty much healthy. But I probably assume that the Lambertoni captive bred, if there are any, uh, because they're so rare and not incredibly demanding as the M. Balfouri. But I would assume that the Balfouri, uh, as seen in Rob C's videos, are much more great eaters than a wild-caught Lambertoni. So temperament, uh, I really don't have to tell you that uh, these guys are nasty. Uh, they will readily bite and go into a threat posture. So it's definitely not a good idea to be handling them. Especially with this female. Uh, she can be very fast for a big bulky tea. And there she is. And she's good. Uh, definitely, in my opinion, one of the most hairy species in the baboon family. I've never seen actually quite a hairy specimen like that. But just because it has a lot of hair, it does not have urticating hair. Therefore, it can't shake it and that's why it relies on much more potent venom and defensiveness to defend their territory. Now as far as breeding is, is concerned I don't really have very much information about monocentropus breeding because in here there's very little done because there's just so few available. Um, I did look on the American Tarantula Society headquarters website and what they said is that uh, they're pretty much identical to most OBTs and people regarding matings. Uh, they're fairly easy. Uh, they go fairly quickly. Um, XX counts I don't really know. I would probably assume it could be around the 20 to 100 mark. But heck, that's one hell of a profit though. You can sell uh, them for around $200 uh, each. And you're, you're really good for that. So what are my overall personal recommendations for these species? Are they worth getting or not? Well, in my opinion only, well, people will have different opinion towards me, and that's perfectly fine. <sighs> what can I say about these? You know, they're, they're okay to own, only if you really are into teas and you have the cash for it, because as you saw, Lambertonis and Balfouris are incredibly expensive, and for the Lambertoni, there's not much demand for them, but there is certainly a big demand over M. Balfouri, and because of that, if people start to breed these uh, more often, we're probably likely to see the price drop down within the next few years. Um, I probably would suggest probably owning a Balfouri over a Lambertoni, just because the way it looks, it looks so good. Blue, brown, and almost yellow. Hey, you can't beat that for, for the price. Lambertoni, on the other hand, you're looking $400 at a brown tea with hair. It's not much else to look at from that. Well, practically you won't be able to see it much because they're pretty much your pet holes. So, it depends on what you like. I probably will see myself owning a Balfouri one of these days uh, when the price uh, starts to go much more lower. Yep, yeah, and that's my new Buru. So I do hope you like this video, and thanks for watching. And the next video that we're going to cover is another Mythbuster video eventually on a New World species. I'm probably going to do uh, the Tapnikinia species, as well as the Rito Palma, since they're closely related to each other, and they're pretty much in the same uh, area and can be cared for the same way. So hope you enjoyed, everyone, and thanks for watching.